Blizzard World is the fever dream of fanboys and fangirls everywhere. It's filled to the brim with references from World of Warcraft, Starcraft, Diablo, Heroes of the Storm, and more. Hi, I'm Alpha Lance with the Leaderboard, and we're about to cover every inch of this map and break down all the hidden Easter eggs in Blizzard World. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon to become a part of our notification squad. <laughs> Get your tickets ready to Blizzard World! Blizzard Entertainment has been making games since 1991. Though Overwatch is the new kid on the block, Blizzard World pays homage to several of the long-standing series that came before it. Blizzard World is Blizzard's love letter to their games. Blizzard has been playing with the idea of making an amusement park for a while now. Back in 2009, they held a theme park contest, encouraging fans to design an overworld map for a theme park populated with rides designed after Blizzard games. Famed Blizzard designer Chris Metzen teased a Blizzney land being dreamed up by the company back in 2014 at an Overwatch panel at BlizzCon. The park was designed to be similar to Disney World and Universal Studios, where park goers can wander through areas dedicated to one fantastical franchise after another. The exact origins of Overwatch's Blizzard World are unknown. Maybe they were really impressed by the level design of real-life amusement parks, or maybe they just wanted to one-up China's knockoff world of Warcraft theme park. Several of the games are mentioned as existing titles in the Overwatch universe, but don't fret, there's no Overwatch section of the park, because that would be way too meta for even Blizzard to manage. Attackers! To the tavern. The attacking team spawns in the Hearthstone Tavern. Hearthstone is Warcraft's card game spin-off that's playable on computers and smartphones worldwide. Games of Hearthstone are being played throughout the tavern, and you can find a massive Hearthstone rune over the fireplace. When you approach the fireplace, you can hear familiar music and dialogue from a speaker in the wall. As you head out, an overview map of the park is visible, showing various attractions outside of the area of play. While waiting for the doors to open, players can plan out what rides they want to see that day. Take it from me, you have to ride the Hellscream Coaster. One of the first things most players will notice as they make their way into the map are the World of Warcraft statues towering in front of Stormwind Keep. These are the same statues that can be found in World of Warcraft outside the Alliance Keep of Stormwind. Here we can see the Warcraft heroes, Danith Trollbane, Kurdan Wildhammer, Archmage Cadgar, Laria Windrunner, and General Turalyon. For those who don't feel like taking the front door, there's a side passage where you can find the Lost and Found Vikings for all of your misplaced items. This is a reference to one of Blizzard's first titles, The Lost Vikings, a game originally released in 1992, when Blizzard was still going by Silicon and Synapse. The three Vikings featured in the game, Eric the Swift, Baloth the Fierce, and Olaf the Stout, are currently playable in Blizzard's Heroes of the Storm as a single unit. You can you can see various park souvenirs on the shelves that visitors can buy, such as Horde and Alliance backpacks, Hearthstone backpacks, Blizzard World shirts, postcards of various amusement park attractions, and World of Warcraft toys such as the inflatable Doom Hammers and a foam version of the holy weapon of Ashbringer. You can also see a heavy tome entitled The Green Hills of Stranglethorn. Players no longer have to collect all four chapters of Jeff Kaplan's original masterpiece, which has since been deemed one of the worst quests in World of Warcraft. Instead they can simply buy them themselves. And a side note, the book's author is named Hemet Nesenwary, a reference to Ernest Hemingway. All aboard the flight to Duskwood! Once inside the archways, players can turn left or right to see posters for other rides, such as Tyriel's Fall, which is outside the map and is a reference to the Diablo angel Tyriel and his fall from Sanctuary after becoming mortal. They can also check out the Hellscream, which is a reference to Horde heroes Gromash and Garrosh Hellscream in Warcraft. From some hints on the posters, it also also seems that murloc hats are likely sold here as well. Got a murloc one of those onto my head. The park's murloc island is on Stone Cairn Lake, an area in World of Warcraft that has a high population of murlocs. Murloc Island can actually be seen on the lake from Booty Bay, another World of Warcraft area complete with a hanging shark. Across from Stone Cairn Lake, players can spin their eyes to the Dark Moon Ferris Wheel, as seen on posters elsewhere in the park. This is a reference to the Dark Moon Fair, an event in World of Warcraft that takes place for a week on the first Sunday of every month and celebrates all things spooky and weird. Before leaving the area, players should take a moment to pay respects to the 131 door to the right. This is a subtle reference to Blizzard's real world 131 address in Irvine, California. If you wander around, you can spot park signs that read, Play nice, play fair, which is a part of Blizzard's mission statement and there is no cow level, which is a reference to a long-standing Easter egg that Blizzard loves placing in games. Cow levels first appeared in Diablo 2, 
two as a secret level with an extremely powerful cow king and his hell bovine subjects. This came about after the first Diablo had a faked screenshot teasing a secret cow level. The cow level was also referenced in StarCraft as a cheat code that if entered gave you an instant win. Players can get in line for the Flight of Duskwood ride, though the Griffin cards just loop around. Across from it is the Fargo Deep Mine Ride, which is based off an abandoned gold mine found in Warcraft's Elwyn Forest. If you take a closer look, you can see that there's a height requirement to ride it, and sorry, Torbjorn doesn't make the cut. Next door to the Fargo Deep Mine is Snaxoramus, which is a delicious reference to Naxoramus, a floating necropolis located in Dragonblight. To wrap up our World of Warcraft references, we'll also note some of the park attractions located outside the walkable area. Near the park entrance, players can see the ancient Curios, the auction house, and a sign for the Wizard Sanctum Magic Show. If you walk along the path towards the Darkwood Ferris Wheel, you'll pass through the gates of Orgrimmar, basically the Horde capital, and eventually reach the Siege of Orgrimmar attraction. Defenders! To the Arcade! The starting point for the Defenders team is the Heroes Arcade, a Heroes of the Storm themed area of the map just behind the Nexus experience. Though it doesn't get a full area, there are still plenty of more subtle references around. For starters, there are the Asmodunk basketball games, referencing the baller skin for Asmodon that started as a meme that players can unlock in Heroes. There's also some classic arcade air hockey, because every arcade needs one, and a row of murky themed ski ball machines to play. On the game's high scoreboard, players will notice that Sombra has the lead at 999, though it's likely she hacked that. Beating out Diva, Junkrat, only really makes sense that Junkrat would be really good at ski ball, and Soldier 76. Seems like the old dog still got it. A triggered event occurs when players select Sombra and walk up to the Osmo Dunk machines. They'll glitch out and display Sombra's skull symbol and then display the score of 9,999. Here's of the Storm backpacks are sold around the map, alongside StarCraft packs at the gift stands. While it exists outside the play area, the map lists Blackheart's Revenge as another available Heroes of the Storm themed attraction. Other attractions noted only on the overview map include the World of Warcraft themed Murky, Lurky, and Gurky parking lots, as well as Escape from the Stockade, Moonwell, Cadgar's Herbs, Pesty's Apothecary, and the Zeppelin Canoeing. Black Rock Mountain, a World of Warcraft expansion, is listed as an attraction and even gets its own posters, although it's not visible when looking out over the lake. To the StarCraft universe and beyond! Once you step out of the Heroes Arcade, you'll find yourself in the StarCraft area of the park, where you can find Protoss and Terran structures crafted straight from the stars. Their Protoss probes are busy at work flying around the map collecting minerals, while a Terran tank in siege mode stands guard. Overwatch's lead writer Michael Chu once estimated that the park would cost as much as mm, 1,800 minerals and 275 Vespian gas, so those probes better keep at it. Towering over the area is a Protoss Nexus, which houses is the StarCraft experience. It advertises various VR and 4D attractions, such as Journey to Ire, the Protoss homeworld, and the Overlord Transport, which ferries attendees around the map almost like the Blizzard World's cable car, but scarier. Thankfully, there's a compartment under these Overlords, so we don't have to ride inside them like the Zerg normally do in StarCraft. You can hear dialogue from the StarCraft adjutant coming from the speakers in the walls. The adjutant is an AI that assists Terran players with commanding their units. Underneath the Proton Pylon, you'll find the Pylon Terrace, where you can order some food and also some StarCraft action figures, like a cool Terran Marine, an SCV, the Terran Mineral Gathering Unit, and even a Zergling from the Zerg faction. There's also some yummy treats around the map, such as World of Warcraft themed Merlocicles. Merlocicles? Merl they're delicious, believe me. Deathwings, which of course refer to the big bad Deathwing himself, what looks to be a Cho'Gall double popsicle, a Terran Marine drinking cup, and delicious waffles with blueberries? Help us out and let us know what you think this food item is referring to on the menu in the comments below. The big blue structure firing off into the sky is a Terran Ghost Academy, which is a tech building players use to unlock the ghost unit in StarCraft. In StarCraft, it also launches nukes, so maybe don't hang around it too long. Across the lake, you can see more Protoss structures, although they aren't accessible at this time. On the overview map, there's also a Terran Command Center liftoff, as well as a Zerg Hatchery Petting Zoo, and Spawning Pool Water Park complete with Nidus Worm Slide. Enjoy these attractions at your own risk. A hell of a theme park. 
Marking the end of the StarCraft area, a large sign reads, Reign of the Black King. This references the mid-boss of Diablo and an early boss in Diablo 3, King Leoric, who was known as the Black King and later the Skeleton King after becoming corrupted by Diablo. Players can either check out the backstage areas or explore the Leoric Manor, as if they were right in a Diablo game. Approaching some of the open tombs will activate dialogue from Deckard Kane, a scholar who appears in all of the Diablo games. Breakable barrels don't leave any good loot, unfortunately, but if you have sharp eyes, you can find various potions around the map, or you can buy some at a stand outside. Pick up a Diablo backpack, mini coffin, or some postcards while you're there, too. Outside of the area of play, the map lists several other Diablo-themed attractions that we wish we could get in line for. There's a section that's set up as the city from Diablo, Khaldun, which is complete with the Khaldun Market and Shen's Delights shops. Below that, you'll find the Slaughtered Calf Inn and the Tristram Cathedral, as seen in New Tristram. And of course, the family favorite, the Den of Evil. One last Easter egg to note isn't a reference to a Blizzard game at all. If you look across the Karen Stone Lake, you will notice little figures moving around the park. These park goers don't look like much from the docks, but getting a closer look reveals a little behind the scenes tidbit. Once you get outside the map and fly over to the other side of the area, you can see that the figures are actually translucent models of none other than Soldier 76 in various colors. Guess Jack Morrison decided to treat himself with a trip to Blizzard World to relax for the day. I hope he's got the Hellscream ride in his sights. Blizzard went through a lot of painstaking effort to create all the unique assets and textures you see on the map, making sure they all felt right in regards to the series they represent. By all means then, this is not an easter egg that's meant to jab or knock at Blizzard, but rather it's just a funny way to solve the problem of populating the park. And that's it for now. I'm your host, Alpha Lance, and thanks for watching the Easter eggs of Blizzard World. Did we get them all? Which is your favorite ride? Comment below and let us know. Be sure to click the bell icon and become part of our notification squad, and remember to subscribe to the leaderboard, your home for video game facts.